Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Tuesday, September 8th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So today we're gonna get a bit of an update from Governor Mike DeWine, plus a sneak peek at what's coming to Cedar Point this fall. But before we dive too deep into anything, let me get you all caught up on the latest coronavirus data. So today there were 656 new cases of coronavirus reported compared to the 21 day average of 1,051. 22 coronavirus related deaths were noted in the last 24 hour period compared to the average of 20. Hospitalizations were at 80 today with a 21 day average coming in at 73. There were also eight ICU admissions reported compared to the average of 11 over the last 21 days. And I say this every time, but data reported over a weekend, especially over a long weekend like we just had, tends to be a little bit lower. So we'll get a more clear picture of what's happening in our community probably in the next day or so. But the governor did also update his list of counties in order of those with the most cases per 100,000 people to the least. Putnam County remained at the top of the list with 301.2 cases per 100,000 over the last two weeks. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention threshold for high incidence is just 100 cases per 100,000. The only other Northwest Ohio County in the top 10 was Henry County, which dropped from the ninth spot this week. Henry is reported to have 129.6 cases per 100,000 hundred thousand people. And DeWine took a brief moment during his press conference today to clear up confusion about the latest non-congregate sheltering order. He said he's aware of internet rumors that incorrectly claim that these orders allow children to be separated from their parents without permission. DeWine said this is not in our order and there is no truth to the rumor. Families will not be separated and kids will not be away from their loved ones. He said the order creates a funding mechanism to allow for federal reimbursement for those looking to create places for people to safely isolate or quarantine. It has been used in a handful of cases in Ohio, but not in any large scale way. Do I explain that having quarantine housing options gives people the choice of a safe, comfortable place to recover from the virus while others can stay in the original housing? He reiterated that neither FEMA nor the Ohio Department of Health are going to be setting up FEMA camps for anyone to quarantine against their will. And looking a little bit more locally here, three-year-old Braylon Noble was reported missing by his mother on Friday around noon after she says he disappeared from their Hunter's Ridge apartment on Gibraltar Heights Drive in South Toledo. The family says Braylon is nonverbal and has autism, but he does cry a lot. He's also a lot more likely to respond to shorter sentences such as, come here. Toledo Police on Tuesday released the 911 call placed Friday to alert police that Braylon is missing. You can listen to that call on our website, WTOL.com, or right here on our YouTube channel. Volunteers are still signing up for the search of the gazebo at the Hunters Ridge Apartments, although there were fewer volunteers Tuesday morning than Monday and over the weekend. The search coordinator said around 15 volunteers were out searching as of noon around the complex. Searchers are planting orange flags if they see anything suspicious, as well as to mark places they've already looked. The FBI continues to to assist Toledo police in the search for Braylon, and they continue to ask the public to contact law enforcement with any information on his whereabouts. And a reward of up to $5,000 is being offered for information on the successful discovery of Braylon. And today was the first day of school for a lot of area kids, including the late Toledo police officer Anthony Diaz's son, Eunice and Matham. But unlike most kids, these two boys are facing the new school year without their dad, who was shot and killed in the line of duty on July 4th. The Toledo Police Department wasn't about to let them walk to school alone, so dozens of TPD officers showed up to the Dia household to make sure the boys got to school safely. And a 17-year-old in Cleveland has been charged in the killing of Cleveland Police Detective James Skernovitz and another man, Scott Dingus. The 17-year-old will be arraigned on Tuesday morning and has been charged with 11 counts in connection with the killings, including the following. Aggravated murder, murder, aggravated robbery, felonious assault. Skernovitz and Dingus were shot and killed at 10 p.m. last Thursday. Skernovitz, who is 53 years old, was a 25-year veteran of the Cleveland Police Department who was working undercover at the time of his killing. Sources told our sister station WKYC in Cleveland that 50-year-old Dingus was there as an informant, although that wasn't confirmed by the Cleveland Police Department. Cleveland Police Chief Calvin Williams also confirmed that another police officer, 39-year-old Nicholas Sabo, died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound on Thursday. Chief Williams said they are not sure yet if there is a connection between the shooting death of Detective Skernovitz and Sabo's suicide. And we will continue to keep you updated on any new developments in this case. 
And House Democrats are investigating Postmaster General Louis DeJoy after he was accused of encouraging employees at his business to contribute to Republican candidates before reimbursing them under the guise of bonuses, which, if true, would be a violation of campaign finance laws. Five people who worked for DeJoy's former business, New Breed Logistics, say they were urged by DeJoy's aides or by DeJoy himself to write checks and attend fundraisers at his mansion in Greensboro, North Carolina. Two former employees told the Washington Post that DeJoy would later give bigger bonuses to reimburse for the contributions. Now, to be clear, it's not illegal to encourage employees to contribute to a candidate, but it is illegal to reimburse them as a way to avoid federal campaign contribution limits. Representative Carolyn Maloney, who chairs the House Oversight Committee, urged the Board of Governors of the U.S. Postal Service to immediately suspend a joy whom she says they should never have selected in the first place. A spokesperson for the Postmaster General said DeJoy was unaware that any workers felt pressure to make donations. They went on to say that DeJoy believes he has always complied with campaign fundraising laws and regulations. And President Donald Trump said Monday that DeJoy, a major donor to the Trump campaign and other Republicans, should lose his job if campaign finance irregularities are indeed uncovered. But before I go, let's take a look at some fun fall news. Now, the Halloween season has a much different feel at Cedar Point this year, as unfortunately, the park has canceled the Halloween weekends for 2020. Instead, Cedar Point is unleashing an all-new Halloween event known this year as Tricks and Treats Fall Fest. The fest takes place for the remainder of the season and is from noon to 8 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday through November 1st. So here are some of the highlights. For kids, there will be trick-or-treat candy stations, monster makeovers, and costume contests with awards at all age levels. Check out games, mazes, crafts, pumpkin decorating, and more. Plus, Cedar Point's culinary team has crafted 24 new food items that will be sold at select locations throughout the park. Guests can buy a tasting card and enjoy up to six tricks, which are foods that are a little out of the ordinary but still delicious, and treats, which are more recognizable in traditional food items. Or, you know, get a little of both. You can also sip on Halloween-themed boozy beverages or catch a spooky live show. For more details, check out our website, WTOL.com. That is all I have for you today. For more of your top headlines, check us out nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. And for more of these updates, make sure you like this video and you subscribe to our channel. You'll get an alert to your phone whenever we post a super special video. But with all of that, I hope you have a very happy Tuesday.